Welcome back. We're live here at the Latchmere Leisure Centre in Battersea, London. Lloyd Hannigan on the comeback trail as a light middleweight. He fights Mario Almido very shortly. Gary Mason, he stated his intention plainly to become a champion of the world again. Is that realistic? Um, I think in Lloyd's mind it would be, but if you look at, look at the way things are and you look at Lloyd's um, recent record, it doesn't look realistic because he's gone up a weight division. He wasn't the biggest welterweight that there is, and fighters are a lot taller now in their weight divisions. And Lloyd's gone up a weight, so the guys are going to be a lot bigger than they were before. And um, for Lloyd to even get a world title fight, he's going to have to fight someone who's fairly capable, and then I think um, it's in the balance. Let's just have a look at the fight records. And again, an Almedo, who won and lost the Mexican welterweight title in 1988. He's been fighting at light middle ever since. W will, will that make a difference? Um, well, it depends on who, who he beat to win that title from. Um, if you look at his record, he's only got four KOs on it, and that, that indicates that he doesn't punch that well. And um, that's, a, that's a bad sign, because obviously Hannigan can punch. Um, we don't know his, whether he's lost his recent fights to him, because if he, it depends on what he's done recently, that will give you another indication. If he's been on a winning run, then he's going to come in high in confidence. If he's been on a losing run, then there's... He's just going to come and he's going to try for a little bit and see how it goes. What about Hannigan? We saw him in Las Vegas at uh, Cornelius Bozer Edwards Golden Gloves Gym. He should have taken a fight of, of, of this calibre six weeks ago, really. Yes. But, but, but decided against it. He wasn't in the right shape, he said. And after his experience with Breland, which he put down to being overweight, having to lose too much on the day of the fight, mistrained, really, he was careful about making, this fitted in, making sure this fitted into the schedule, wasn't he? Well, it's always hard for a fighter who's coming off a, a defeat like that. He wants everything to be perfect. And if anyway, if he feels in any way that there might be something wrong, they'll find an excuse not to fight. Um, Hannigan, I've been told, is, is, is back to his old moody self. And like, he's been very irritable. Uh, Mickey Duff apparently won't be going up in his corner tonight. Um, Lloyd said to him he doesn't want Mickey in his corner. And uh, Mickey said that he, he, Lloyd, he, Lloyd thought he was going to beg him. <laughs> like, but, <laughs> Anyway, so but if, if he's back to his old form, his old character, that means he, he should be back to uh, his similar fighting ability. But whether he can actually do it anymore, because a bad defeat leaves a mental scar. He was badly, very badly beaten by Breland, wasn't yes, he? Yes, very badly beaten. And then, and then the, the crowd's reaction and everything afterwards, that does affect him. And that tends, that's why I put so much weight on and went to pop the way he did. OK, well, settle back and enjoy this one then. Mario Olmido of Mexico, Lloyd Hannigan, the former undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Let's go downstairs and join Jock Brown. Now we are certainly looking forward to this fight now, Richard, down here. Rod Douglas and I enjoyed that Duke McKenzie fight hugely. Rod, you're saving this moment. Lloyd Hannigan, can he do it in the comeback? He's got to do it. Um, a lot of people have been saying that he's uh, fighting again for the money, but when you've been doing a bit of boxing, or when you've done a bit of boxing, it's hard to get it out of... Every system, you've got to do it, you know, you've got to get back in the ring and prove that you're the best. Especially being as well, he's gone up a weight division as well, he's a lot stronger. What kind of thoughts will be going through his mind right now in the dressing room, do you think? Well, he doesn't want to make a mistake, for starters, and he's got to prove to everybody that they don't want to remember him as the last time when he fought. He's got to prove to everybody that, you know, he's got to look good. Well, he certainly looked very mean and determined at the weigh-in earlier on today. Uh, will there be even more tension than... Welcome back. We're live here at the Latchmere Leisure Centre in Battersea, London. Lloyd Hannigan on the comeback trail as a light middleweight. He fights Mario Almido very shortly. Gary Mason, he stated his intention plainly to become a champion of the world again. Is that realistic? Um, I think in Lloyd's mind it would be, but if you look at, look at the way things are and you look at Lloyd's um, recent record, it doesn't look realistic because he's gone up a weight division. He wasn't the biggest welterweight that there is and fighters are a lot taller now in their weight divisions. And Lloyd's gone up a weight, so the guys are going to be a lot bigger than they were before. And um, for Lloyd to even get a world title fight, he's going to have to fight someone who's fairly capable and then I think um, it's in the balance. Let's just have a look at the fight records. Hannigan and Almedo, who won and lost the Mexican welterweight title in 1988. He's been fighting at light middle ever since. W will, will that make a difference? Um, well, it depends on who, who he beat to win that title from. Um, if you look at his record, he's only got four KOs on it, and that, that indicates that he doesn't punch that well. And um, that's, a, that's a bad sign, because obviously Hannigan can punch. 
Um, we don't know he's, whether he's lost his recent fights, do we? Because if he, depending on what he's done recently, that will give you another indication. If he's been on a winning run, then he's going to come in high in confidence. If he's been on a losing run, then he's, he's just going to come and he's going to try for a little bit and see how it goes. What about Hannigan? We saw him in Las Vegas at uh, Cornelius Boza Edwards Golden Gloves Gym. He should have taken a fight of, of, of this calibre six weeks ago, really. Yes. But, but, but decided against it. He wasn't in the right shape, he said. And after his experience with Breland, which he put down to being overweight, having to lose too much on the day of the fight, mistrained really. He was careful about making this fitted in, making sure this fitted into the schedule, wasn't he? Well, it's always hard for a fighter who's coming off a, a defeat like that. He wants everything to be perfect. And if anyway, if he feels in any way that there might be something wrong, they'll find an excuse not to fight. Um, Hunnigan, I've been told, is, is, is back to his old moody self. And like, he's been very irritable. Uh, Mickey Duff apparently won't be going up in his corner tonight. Um, Lloyd said to him he doesn't want Mickey in his corner. And uh, Mickey said that he, he, Lloyd, he, Lloyd thought he was going to beg him. <laughs> like, but, anyway, so but if, if he's back to his old form, his old character, that means he, he should be back to uh, his similar fighting ability. But whether he can actually do it anymore, because a bad defeat leaves a mental scar. He was badly, very badly beaten by Breland. Wasn't yes, he? very badly beaten. And then, and then the, the crowd's reaction and everything afterwards. That... Mexico, Mario Armino. So that welcome would certainly have helped Lloyd Hunnigan, I reckon. Final instructions from the referee, Roy Francis. And there's the statistics governing the fight. Hunnigan fighting at the heaviest ever weight of his career. Well, he's still one half pounds, but looking in pretty good condition at the start of round one. So scheduled for ten rounds. Mario Almido from Mexico was not the original choice as an opponent for Hannigan for this fight. Carlos Castillo was rejected by the British Boxing Board of Control because he hadn't fought for more than two years. Gary Mason was making reference there to recent records. Almido has l actually lost his last four fights. So Hannigan coming into this fight, a very hot favourite. It's not just perhaps enough for him to win this fight. He's got to do so in some style and convince a lot of people and he could be on the comeback trail. <laughs> Almiro reacting there to the good effort from Hunnigan going forward. Almiro trying to persuade Hunnigan that he hadn't been hurt. So Hunnigan anxious to dispel the memories of the 3rd of March last year when he was mauled by Mark Breland in his attempt to win the WBA welterweight title. Intense interest around the ring for this fight. This was the major draw of the evening to see how Hunnigan would appear. Cautious start, Rod, rather than a blitzing yeah, one. Cautious start, but Lloyd's, look, I mean, I'm just looking at his legs and how wide they are apart. And um, that's just going to show that he's looking for the power shots. He's finding a lot of venom in them punches. But very cautious start. You can cut the atmosphere in there with a knife, so tense. Tension all around, indeed, as Hunnigan. Gets this first round under his belt. Almiro not offering a great threat in the opening three minutes. Yeah. 
It's a good right hand there from Hannigan, and Almeida covers up again. Good left hand from Hannigan. That looked very sharp. Well, he means business all right, Lloyd Hannigan. Determination set in his face. The end of round one. I don't think he'll be too unhappy about that opening round. Right. I don't think he'll be too happy. It's a very good opening round for him. And um, he's walked back to the corner. He's, he looks quite comfortable, quite calm. Um, he's just very good to get that first round out of the way for him. So no, no Mickey Duff in the corner. He was banned by Hannigan. The fighters manager was invited not to come to the corner and Denny Mancini and Dean Powell are there here's Hannigan going forward leading with the left, crossing with the right he looks such a different different fighter now with his, with his um, hair grown a bit but lovely left hook there missed with the second one but you can see the venom in, in Lloyd's face as he's going in so now 30 years old he has a very impressive professional record but the fight that he remembers most is clearly the last one as we start round two and that was against Breland so he's starting a career effectively all over again so the statistics in the first round indicating that Hannigan was in charge success rate and landing punch is not quite what he would have wanted but not a great deal of threat so far being offered by Almido Yes, um, Lloyd's got to prove to everybody that he can be a uh, world like middleweight champion of the world now, so he's got to perform very well tonight. Well, he's had all sorts of troubles out of the ring since that Breland fight. He sold his home, sold his car, sold many of his possessions. Suggestions that he really does have to resurrect the career to earn a lot of money again. The Mexican Almido trying to step up the pace a little. But Huntington does appear to carry the weight quite convincingly. Yeah, he looks very well. He looks very well. He was an exceptional hard trainer when he was world champion and uh, when he was a welterweight. Um, I don't suspect that he will train any less now that he's gone up a weight, but he does look very, very well. Well, he still claims that the major problem against Breland was the wasting he had to do. He slipped and fallen over there. No suggestion of a knockdown. And again, losing his footing there. It was back in September 1986 when he won the world title in Korea, Atlantic City. Six round victory, and the crowd now getting behind him. Sensing perhaps that this fight might not last too long as a cut at the right eye of Olmedo. You'll be aware of the blood trickling down now as Hannigan takes some encouragement from that. Another stumble there from Hannigan. He was pushed over rather by Olmedo. Crossing Olmedo now back into his own corner. Crisp left hook there, close quarters. And you can see the confidence surging through Hannigan once again. This is more like the fighter of old. Almido on his tracks, he's reacted well to it though, the Mexican, a very resilient character because that was a very powerful shot, and Hannigan completely in command in round two. Yes, Lloyd Cooper, a lovely uppercut there, but I'll be able to see the replay of that uh, in a little while, but um, the, the Mexican, Almido, looks very, very durable, I mean, they wouldn't have shipped him all the way over here just to get knocked down on his bum, so, um, you know, he should be looking to give Lloyd the test. Well, he's probably happy to get the first round out of the way. The second round's gone past. He's looked a lot, lot stronger and better. So it looks like his confidence is growing a lot more. Major task there for the Almedo corner is to stem the flow of blood from the right eye. Here's more action from Hunnigan. 
and most of it without any effective reply. Oh, there's a lovely right uppercut from Lord Hannigan. And uh, Amino took it really, really well. Yes, I reckon Second Hannigan out. may have extended Round three. to halt Olvido in his tracks, but the Mexican kept coming forward. Hannigan out of his corner very quickly for the start of round three. Well, Hannigan certainly was completely in command again in round two, and I'm sure the statistics of the second round will prove that. The success record, 40%, a part of both fighters, but you can see the extra punches thrown by Hannigan. But the really powerful ones came from the former World Waterweight champion. Reaching out well with the left hand. A lot of hard work done on the cut. The right eye of Olmido. It doesn't appear really to be in the kind of position which may bring a premature end to the fight, though. More to the side. than he was before when he used to be really fiery and, and um, eager to get the ranch started and flamboyant but he seems more humble perhaps sensing that victory is very near indeed Romero appeared to stop there for a second in the corner he's now gathered himself again to must have some defense to this onslaught from Hunnigan. Well, Vito may have weathered that little storm. Certainly appears as though there may be more to come. He's not uh, moving his target around to avoid Almito throwing his punches. So um, it wants to be on the ball and he wants to be um, sure. Good shots there. Well, he may have decided that Almito can't hurt him. Half a minute left in this round, round three. Almido, to his great credit, battling back well. He was under so much pressure earlier in this round. But, as uh, Rod Nicholas was saying, a very durable-looking character. And the referee waving Lloyd Hannigan to a neutral corner. He's going to have that right eye checked. Certainly has worsened in round three. The referee having a very close look at this. It does appear to be a little bit to the side. And the referee is prepared to allow the fight to continue. satisfied with that round still in command and a lot of work to be done there on Olmido the referee has already expressed his concern about the damage to the right eye of Olmido so the referee marking up his scorecard I cannot think he's doing other than marking that another Hannigan round well maybe Lloyd wants to look to go and stop it for this this round now otherwise um, I can't see the fight going much further with the, the, the eye dam badly damaged as it is so if he wants to look good, he's got to get in there and uh, finish the fight. Well, that was a point where Almiro appeared to be blinded a little by some blood getting into his eye. He stopped for a second. That could have been very costly. There he was, blinded for a second. Second jump, round four. So Hannigan, very happy to come out for round four. And the stool taking a little bit too long to be removed from the corner of Almido. Referee Francis being very careful about that. So Almido with more problems, he's got to protect that right eye and cope with the onslaught of Hunnigan. So the percentage success rate stepping up from Hunnigan in that round to 54.
Almeida certainly not having a happy time in recent fights. He's lost his last four, he's lost eight of the last 13. And now uh, coming forward, getting some encouragement there as he landed well on Hunnigan. Is there some complacency creeping in here, Rod? Well, Lloyd has been a little bit reckless and careless. Well, it wouldn't matter now because the referee has stopped the fight because of that right eye so badly cut. Hannigan has won in the fourth round. He certainly was always in command and the great Mario Almido could not continue with the blood seeping from that cut in his right eye. So the referee has stopped the fight and it certainly was worsening round by round. Hannigan now looking much more relaxed than he has been. He's looking a lot happier now than he was when he came into the ring, looking so full of tension. Well, that shows the confidence shown again by Hannigan. That's the Hannigan of old. And the referee, Mike Shinfield, will clarify the details of Hannigan's success. Now, gentlemen, please, right. after one minute of round four, ladies and gentlemen, Almino has sustained a cut over the right eye. The referee has stopped the contest. The winner, ladies and gentlemen, Lloyd Hannigan. say that that's a popular win as far as I'm concerned I like Lloyd Hannigan he's got class and he's got style and you have to admire the fact that he's been prepared to step back into a British ring after the humiliation against Mark Breland and he's downstairs in that ring there now talking with Jock Brown let's hear him Lloyd congratulations were you happy with that performance yeah I was very happy because um you know you see the size of him compared to me and um, he was a big fella, big junior middleweight. But he showed people that I, I can um, handle junior middleweight. And he gave me a good workout because it's, it's very tricky in the first few rounds, you know. And the Mexican, they're very dodgy. I thought he was going to come across with some right hands and things like that. I tried to test my, test my chin because um, from the last fight, you know. I thought he might come out and be a bit more. But he was respective of my power, you know. You did look very tense at the start of the fight, Lloyd. Did you feel the pressure? No, I didn't feel the pressure because I know I could handle it. I mean, the same way this fellow been bleeding tonight, it's the same way my sparring partners have been bleeding. So it, I didn't feel the pressure. I was looking forward to this fight. I mean, I couldn't really sleep properly, you know, because I, was, I couldn't wait for tonight to come because I just wanted to erase the bad memory with Mike Breland because I've done a lot of things that, that um, morning of the fight, you know. And also leading up to the fight, I, I was seeing doctors and things like that. In the morning of the fight, I... I got in my Rolls Royce and drive up to Hyde Park and I run on Hyde Park and Kensington Park the morning of my fight with Breland and I, was, I couldn't, still couldn't make the weight and then I came back to my hotel room and I started shutter boxing, still couldn't make the weight I started skipping, still couldn't make the weight um, I was leaving, that was, I didn't make the weight at 12 o'clock that day and then I went to the, before I leave to go to the weighing um, I, I just made the weight I just made the weight and then at the, after the weighing we usually go to a restaurant and have something to eat and everyone know I'm a big eater you know <laughs> I could give George Foreman a, a competition when it comes down <laughs> to that but um, what happened was I ordered all this food and I couldn't eat it the day I thought breathing all I had was two glasses of water and half a starter I couldn't eat my stomach had shrunk so much so I was really looking forward to tonight I was really fit I trained really hard I was running like 10 miles I run myself into the ground till I even hurt my grind, you know. I was training so much. I've been, I, I didn't train properly for four weeks up to the fight because I hurt my, my grind and stuff like that and I couldn't train properly, you know. Can you go all the way to new weight, do you think? Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to go all the way. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it'd be difficult, but nothing is easy in life. And uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge, you know. It's nice to be back and uh, I miss the people. And British public, they're great, you know. Uh, I love them, you know. Well done tonight, Lloyd. A great comeback. Thanks very Thank much indeed. Much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, that nearly went as long as the fight, didn't it? Well done, Jock. <laughs> Heard the story about the weight loss against Mark Breland once or twice, but it is good to have Lloyd Hannigan back. Uh, Gary? Well, 
that, that was, um, I wouldn't call it a faultless performance. I'd call it a good performance for a comeback, obviously with nerves and everything else. Um, but the, the, the thing I noticed more than anything else was the fact that the other guy was like physically bigger than Lloyd Hannigan. And, Broader shoulders. Yes. Yeah. And he, he looked like his bones looked just physically bigger in every way. And that guy wasn't even fully conditioned. So what would happen when Hannigan meets a guy of that weight with a similar thing? It, it looks. But it, it, obviously, um, Hannigan, he did, um, he did a few things wrong there. Um, but overall, it was a good performance for the stage that uh, we were at. Let's have a look at uh, one or two of the early incidents. It was stopped eventually on a cut. I think 13, 12 seconds or so. Well, 15, wasn't it, before yeah, the end that, of round three here? That was three a beautiful uppercut. Up Hannigan has always had the, the repertoire of punches, and he's proven that he's still got them. A lot of his reflexes are still there. Um, and he's still stopping them by cuts, because he's had a few like that, hasn't he? He took one or two liberties there, didn't he? <laughs> yes. Yes, but you see, the, the funny thing with these Mexicans, they're always very tough. They, they have these fights every day for nothing in the bar. So when they come out in competition, <laughs> um, it, it, they can take punches. Like you can hit them once and they might go. If you hit them twice, they'll get upset because you took a liberty. Punches from the last round here. Lloyd can see the blood yeah. plainly. Yes. And he can sniff blood. He wants to finish this now. Uh, he missed so, with, a, uh, with a, um, a straight right there, which would have caused He missed something. with one or two uppercuts as well, wasn't he? I mean, it, yes. it, plainly the timing wasn't quite right tonight. No, well, it, it, it will take a little bit of time to get back in the groove, because that's the first time he's actually been in the ring for a long time, and not been in the ring for so long. It's going to affect him, regardless of what he says, it will make a bit of a difference. He's a good, good boy, Hunnigan. Yes, but see, the thing is, Hunnigan's bought black, regardless of what anybody thought, it was exciting to watch his comeback and to see what happened. And that's always been the thing with Ron Hunnigan. Like him or dislike him, you enjoy watching his fights. Yeah. Well, we do. That's right. It's yeah. good to have him around in the scene. We need one or two of the characters. Derek Angle, our unbeaten cruiserweight. He comes next after the break.